Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. You know when you're building a tank, a reservoir, a fuel cell, oftentimes you're using outside corner joints. A friend of mine from Florida, Roy Crumrine, uh, was building some little tanks that has an automotive application and uh, he, he asked me if I wanted him to film them and upload them in case I wanted to do something with that. So I said sure. Roy and I are working on some projects together and so when I saw what he was doing I thought well I can mock up some arc shots with that and uh, so it's kind of interesting because he's using an inverter at about 120 hertz give or take and I'm using a transformer machine uh, 60 hertz. Hopefully we can give a few tips on making jobs like this go better. Let's, let's get into it. For building a box out of sheet metal like this you need a lot of clamps and they don't have to be made for welding. This is just a, a you know carpentry type clamp but for sheet metal work very handy as long as you keep it far enough away from the welds. Now generally you want to tack with filler metal sometimes you can't. When you're working by yourself a lot of times you have to tack without filler and having a corner like this to use to melt for filler kind of helps. So there's a little radius in the bend, but the, the, the other piece is square cut. So you got a little corner hanging up there, perfect to just melt over and melt in there and use for filler metal. When you don't use filler metal, you always got a chance of your tacks cracking on aluminum. All right, so also you need several tacks when you're doing a thing like this. You know, tack every few inches, and the thinner the metal is, the more tacks you need. This is 11 gauge. Uh, and so, you know, a tack every three inches or so can be enough. Too many tacks just kind of messes with the overall appearance of the bead when you're finished. So you don't want to have, you know, an excessive number of tacks. And you want to try to make your tack welds a little bit smaller than your final bead will be so that you can completely consume the tack and, and you really can't tell where it is once you're finished. Roy's using a, a WeldTech Speedway SW320 torch here. It's a water-cooled torch, 320 amp torch, but it uses the same hardware as any uh, 9 or 20 style torch does. You can see tack on each corner and then one in the middle and he's laying out a hole here because a hole is going to be cut here later on and so he's just coordinated with the uh, manufacturer and they're going to need to drill a bigger hole, machine a bigger hole, and the reason for Roy wanting to drill this hole is because when you seal up a unit like this, if you don't have a, a vent hole, a weep hole of some kind for gases to expand, uh, when, you're, when you're sealing it up, gases expand, oftentimes it just blows the weld out and it's a mess. It's always good to communicate when you're doing side work, uh, work for machine shops or you're, you're the welder, you're taking parts home from a sheet metal shop. Uh, to communicate with them on a job like this and let them know, listen, there's, there's going to be some issues with this thing, with the pressure building and wanting to blow the weld out at the end. Are there any holes that are going to be drilled in this thing later on? Any ports that are going to be machined? Can I go ahead and drill a pilot hole? One little pilot hole is all it takes to let the gases ex escape and keep from blowing the weld out when you're sealing it up. You can hear the pitch change in the arc here because I've dropped down to 60 hertz. This is a transformer machine, just a, just a plain old Lincoln TIG 175 square wave, no frequency adjustment or anything like that. And pitch picks back up with Roy welding with the inverter here. And we're both using a number 5 cup. I'm using a Pyrex cup just so that you can see it a little bit better, I hope. But a regular old number 5 cup doesn't require much gas at all. Like sometimes 10 to 12 CFH is enough and when you're doing work on your own and you're paying for your own gas that's a big deal sometimes but pay attention to what is coming up next you see there's a tack on the very corner now if that is under a lot of stress when I light up on it and melt it it's gonna pop loose and maybe get a gap so I put a tack maybe a half inch inboard and then back right up to that corner tack and it keeps that from happening Again, I'm filming with the Pyrex cup. Roy is using a standard alumina cup, but I'm trying to dip about once per second. And when you watch Roy weld, he's might, he might be dipping just a little bit faster. But we're coming out with a very similar appearance in the weld in the end. Even though he's using an inverter at 120 hertz, I'm using a standard transformer at 60. Now look at this. This is a little stand that Roy made. Uh, primarily for propping his hand when he's using that, using that positioner in the background there. 
an adjustable stand, adjustable in height, adjustable in two or three other areas as well. A little base there with a set screw. And then on the top, a lot more adjustment. So it's a very versatile little piece of equipment that he's using right now just as a slide rest. So he can make a long run here, about a foot long, uh, without having to get two befores and prop his hand on. He's just sliding his hand along that smooth piece of tubing there. You know, I've read before the ABCs of welding are always be comfortable. And that really is true. And so anything you can do like this, like he's got probably 15 or 20 of these to do, and it just makes it go a lot easier, makes the weld look better, and he's a lot less fatigued at the end of the day after taking a couple of hours and building that little stand. Again, you can hear the pitch go down where I, the arc shot is at 60 hertz, where Roy's welding at about 120 hertz. A little swirl at the end as he tapers amperage prevents crater cracks. All right, well that about wraps it up today. Here's some of the final welds that Roy did. Nice job, Roy. <laughs> and the machine that I used for the arc shots, just this simple little TIG 175 from Lincoln. I used that stubby torch from Weld Tech with the Pyrex cup and a little bit of helium. And it made a heck of a difference. So basically I use about 10 CFH of argon and just barely cracked the ball on the helium and it cleans up the puddle quite a bit. All right, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of thing and visit the store at weldmonger.com.